This is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Whew. Boy. Tonight, America pays tribute to one of the giants of journalism. He was a kind, caring man with a razor-sharp mind and an unquenchable desire to know things. I think we all owe uh, Walter a, gr a great debt. And that's the way it is, right? Remembering Walter Cronkite the way it was. This is the CBS Evening News with Katie Curry. Good evening, everyone. Say the name Walter Cronkite, and for so many people, the memories come flooding back. That's what happened today as the death of our CBS colleague made headlines all over the country. Memories of decades of the biggest news stories and of the man who brought them to us. His nightly broadcast was appointment television in millions of homes. We didn't just watch the news, we watched Walter Cronkite as he became our trusted guide through history. And that's the way it is. 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 For half a century, Walter Cronkite told it the way it was, delivering the news straight and unvarnished. Evening, everyone. Here is the news. Among the pioneers who built television news from the ground up, he forged a special bond with audiences. Here Trustworthy, plain spoken, unflappable. And you were there. Walter was there. He had lived the history of the century and reported it. Born in 1916 in St. Joseph, Missouri. As a young man growing up in Houston and Kansas City, he saw firsthand the Dust Bowl of the 1930s and the Great Depression. As a young wire service reporter in World War II, he hit the ground with troops in North Africa and was the first to make it back with the story. I'm just back from the biggest assignment that any American reporter could have so far in this war. He was all of 26, a natural, before the camera and the microphone. In the early 1950s, television came calling. Walter anchored the news on CBS, first in Washington, then on the network from New York. As television began taking wing in the 1950s, so did Walter, covering the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. She's to be crowned Britain's sixth reigning queen. An atomic device. Atom bomb testing in Nevada, the birth of the American space program. A fire at the apogee to raise the perigee. Walter knew 12 American presidents. I've met all of America's presidents since Herbert Hoover, and I've known some of them pretty well. Lyndon Johnson called the CBS Evening News while I was actually on the air and insisted that they put him through to me on the air. The secretary said, but, he, but he's on the air, Mr. President. I don't give a damn where he is. <laughs> put him on the phone. <laughs> he assumed the anchor chair of the Evening News in 1962. Good evening from the CBS News Control Center in New York. This is Walter Cronkite reporting. Walter Cronkite was the man that most Americans turned to to find out what was happening, to be comforted in times of stress, to be reassured that as bad as things might be, uh, there was a, a feeling of continuity. He provided that continuity five nights a week. The Supreme Court today legalized abortion. A flurry of activity at the Jack Ruby trial. The risk of a meltdown at the Three Mile Island atomic power plant. And he was with us during America's darkest moments. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. And I uh, almost lost it there. His authority and his calmness held the nation together, not forget CBS News, he held the nation together during critical times. Cronkite was a fixture at political conventions, including the Democrats' chaotic meeting in Chicago in 1968, a party in a country at war with itself over Vietnam. Walter's skepticism grew while reporting on the Vietnam War. He shared those feelings in a landmark broadcast in which he acknowledged he was stating his opinion that it was time for the nation to withdraw. But it is increasingly clear to this report that the only rational way out then will be to negotiate, not as victors, 
but as an honorable people who lived up to their pledge to defend democracy and did the best they could. After that report, I recall that LBJ said to many of us that I've lost Walter Cronkite, I've lost the war. In the 60s and the 70s, when uh, the shingles were flying off of America's roof and everything was coming loose, you really needed, you really needed a, a voice of, uh, of calm and professionalism and accuracy. And that's, and America got that on the evening news with Walter Cronkite. Countdown is at two minutes. But his personal passion was space. I think that our conquest of space will probably be the most important story of the whole 20th century. Looks like a good flight. Oh, go, baby. In 1969, a waiting world held its breath as man first approached the surface of the moon. The eagle has landed. Rocket tranquility. We copy you on the ground. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is my last broadcast as the anchor man of the CBS Evening News. For me, it's a moment for which I long have planned, but which nevertheless comes with some sadness. His own spirit was unconquerable. After leaving the Evening News, he traveled well into his 80s, <laughs> making documentaries and enjoying himself. In 1996, he told us how he felt about the amazing century he had witnessed. If there's anything I've learned, it is that we Americans do have a way of rising to the challenges that confront us. Just when it seems we're most divided, we suddenly show our remarkable solidarity. The 20th century may be leaving us with a host of problems, but I've also noted that it does seem darkest before the dawn. There's reason to hope for the 21st century. And that's the way it will be. President Obama, who was just an infant when Walter Cronkite began anchoring this broadcast, is leading the nation in paying tribute to him. For decades, Walter Cronkite was the most trusted voice in America. His rich baritone reached millions of living rooms every night. And in an industry of icons, Walter set the standard by which all others have been judged. He was there through wars and riots, marches and milestones, calmly telling us what we needed to know. And through it all, he never lost the integrity he gained growing up in the heartland. Also honoring Walter Cronkite is another president, Bill Clinton. Earlier today, I asked him what he remembered most about Walter. My earliest memories, I think, are uh, of the 1960s, the Kennedy years. Uh, I remember uh, when CBS went from a 15-minute to a 30-minute news program. We discussed it in my house. I remember he did an interview with President Kennedy. And then, of course, I remember his gripping commentary when the president was killed. Uh, we kept the television on to Walter Cronkite the whole time. We wanted to see what he had to say. What was your relationship with him like? Well, it was good. I, I got to know him after I became president because we both spent uh, some time in the summer in Martha's Vineyard. And we started going to a number of parties together. And then in 1998, when I was there, he called me one day and uh, invited Hillary and Chelsea and me to go sailing with him and with Betsy. And we, we had the most wonderful day. It was a kind and generous thing to do. And we, we went out together. And he was then, I think, 81. And already, uh, he was still a great sailor. And we really struck up a friendship. He was what he seemed to be. He was a kind, caring man with a razor-sharp mind and an unquenchable desire to know things. And he had a very high standard. Uh, when he said something, he believed it to be true. What are the qualities that stand out to you personally that made Walter Cronkite such a venerated American, such an icon? First, I think people could identify with him. He seemed accessible and open. You never thought he was trying to spin you. You never had the feeling that there was a storyline with Walter Cronkite, that he just looked at the facts, did his best to find out what was going on, and then told them to you. It made him incredibly trusted, and that's a very valuable commodity. Do you think you've ever seen someone uh, celebrated and remembered with such respect and reverence? Not in the media, really. 
And I say that not because there aren't other media people worthy of respect, uh, even reverence, but I think that it's important. That he came into television news when it was young. It was a momentous time in America in the 60s and 70s, lots of things going on, lots of real raw news to report. President Clinton, thank you so much for talking with us and sharing your memories of Walter Cronkite tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you. As I said, he was a, a great citizen, but he was also a profoundly good man. I don't think we should lose sight of that. All those professional gifts emanated from a very good core. And uh, that's something that's beyond training. It's just who he was. Very well said. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. And when we come back, Apollo 11 astronaut Buzz Aldrin remembers Walter Cronkite. Hello, everyone. Here we are again in Studio A, our CBS television control point for the Westinghouse coverage, this time of the Democratic National Convention. If you've had a heart attack caused by a completely blocked artery, another heart attack could be lurking, waiting to strike. A heart attack caused by a clot, one that could be fatal. But Plavix helps save lives. Plavix, taken with other heart medicines, goes beyond what other heart medicines do alone to provide greater protection against heart attack or stroke and even death by helping to keep blood platelets from sticking together and forming clots. Ask your doctor about Plavix, protection that helps save lives. If you have a stomach ulcer or other condition that causes bleeding, you should not use Plavix. When taking Plavix alone or with some other medicines, including aspirin, the risk of bleeding may increase, so tell your doctor before planning surgery. And always talk to your doctor before taking aspirin or other medicines with Plavix, especially if you've had a stroke. If you develop fever or unexplained weakness or confusion, tell your doctor promptly as these may be signs of a rare but potentially life-threatening condition called TTP, which has been reported rarely, sometimes in less than two weeks after starting therapy. Other rare but serious side effects may occur. If you take Plavix with other heart medicines, continuing to do so will help increase your protection against a future heart attack or stroke beyond your other heart medicines alone. You may be feeling better, but your risk never goes away. Help stay protected. Stay with Plavix. Did you know toothpaste is abrasive on dentures? Look, scratches where bacteria can collect and grow, and bacteria can cause bad breath. Use Polydent instead. Polydent is proven to clean without scratching and kills odor-causing bacteria. Use Polydent every day. Discover a smoothie like no other. New Activia smoothies. Creamy, delicious, and above all, it contains bifidus regularis and is clinically proven to help regulate your digestive system. New Activia smoothies. Activia! Well, mama, don't you make me another meatloaf. Forget the mac and cheese. I want some fun piled on a bun. I want a man which please. Make tonight a man which night. I want a man which please. I'm Lindy. And I'm Joni. We've been best friends since we were two. We've always been alike. We even both have osteoporosis. But we're active, especially when we vacation. So when I heard about Reclass, the only once a year IV osteoporosis treatment, I called Joni. My doctor said Reclass helps re strengthen our bones to help make them resistant to fracture for 12 whole months. And Reclast is approved to help protect from fracture in more places. Hips, spine, even other bones. You should not take Reclast if you're on Zometa. Have low blood calcium, kidney problems, or you're pregnant, plan to become pregnant, or nursing. Take calcium and vitamin D daily. Tell your doctor if you develop severe muscle, bone, or joint pain, or if you have dental problems, as rarely jaw problems have been reported. The most common side effects include flu-like symptoms, fever, muscle or joint pain, and headache. Nothing strengthens you like an old friendship. But when it comes to our bones, we both look to Reclast. you got to ask your doctor. Once a year, Reclast. Year-long protection for on-the-go women. A broadcasting legend. An American icon. The biggest names in politics, news, and entertainment. Remembering Walter Cronkite. Tomorrow. Walter Cronkite died just three days before the 40th anniversary of the first manned landing on the moon, July 20th, 1969. He was the Apollo 11 mission's biggest fan, and he wasn't afraid to let his enthusiasm show. Never has there been before, nor will there be, anything like this pioneering adventure. The landing on the moon presented an interesting emotional challenge for me. 
I had just as much time to prepare for that landing as the space program did. I'd watched it from the beginning. And yet, when that vehicle landed on the moon, I was speechless. Boy. <laughs> I really couldn't say a thing. Neil Armstrong, 38-year-old American, standing on the surface of the moon. I mean, at a time when there were a lot of other problems in this country and elsewhere, people were downcast. Everybody there was upcast. We were looking toward the stars, looking toward the moon. Edwin Buzz Aldrin was Neil Armstrong's moonwalking partner 40 years ago. He joins us now. Buzz Aldrin, nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to be with you, Kitty. NASA released a statement, and it, it said, from the earliest days of the space program, Walter brought the excitement, the drama, and the achievements of spaceflight directly into our homes. He obviously generated a lot of excitement, Buzz, for the program. Do you think NASA, in a way, owes Walter Cronkite a debt of gratitude for sharing his enthusiasm with the American public? I, I think we all owe uh, Walter a, gr a great debt. And uh, I think Walter was trying to cash in on that a little bit uh, in the uh, Journalist in Space program. Unfortunately, uh, after the Challenger accident uh, that took Krista McAuliffe, uh, those programs were uh, terminated. Would you have liked to have seen Walter Cronkite go up in space because it was one of his dreams? I, I would have loved to have seen him uh, uh, Get in, get in that shuttle and, and go up there uh, and, and be a part of uh, reminiscing about what spaceflight is really about in, in the golden words that, that only Walter Cronkite knew how to communicate to all of, a, all of people around the world. Buzz Aldrin, thank you very much. And we'll be back right after this. To ensure man's survival in the hostile environment of outer space. Neil Armstrong, 38-year-old American, standing on the surface of the moon. Applebee's two for 20. It's refreshed and ready for summer. Choose one appetizer and two entrees for just 20 bucks. Two for 20. It's real food at the right price, and it's only at Applebee's. It's a whole new neighborhood. Jillian, you had occasional irregularity. Mm. I know that you were just living with That was my normal. I thought that was normal. What changed? I saw Activia in my mom's fridge, tried it for a couple weeks, and it's liberating. Activia. What's your Cialis moment? When she gives me that look. When at last we're alone. When, when we, we both, both decide. <laughs> Today, guys with erectile dysfunction can be ready with another dosing option from Cialis. Cialis for daily use is a clinically proven low-dose tablet you take every day. So you can be ready anytime the moment is right. So relax and take your time. Tell your doctor about your medical condition and all medications and ask if you're healthy enough for sexual activity. Don't take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Don't drink alcohol in excess with Cialis. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injuries, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss in hearing or vision, stop taking Cialis and call your doctor right away. Today, you have options. Cialis for daily use or 36-hour Cialis. Ask your doctor if Cialis is right for you, so when the moment is right, you can be ready. Always carry Beano to go to prevent gas. And maybe some gas relievers in case you're out of Beano, disaster strikes, and something happens you regret forever. On second thought, just carry an extra Beano. Take Beano before, and there'll be no gas. Once you've mastered the complexities of a headache, the rest of the body is a no-brainer. Doesn't your whole body deserve Excedrin strength relief? Excedrin back in body. Excedrin. What ache? Once a day, you can help support your immune system. Once a day, you can get almost 25% of your daily recommended fruit and vegetable servings in one 8-ounce glass. Once a day, you can get a unique, all-natural power pack of essential vitamins and minerals. Perhaps once a day isn't enough. Florida orange juice. Healthy, pure, and simple.
Since I grew up, I remember he was the news for so long. He's middle America all these years. He wasn't bright, he wasn't left. He was news and he was straight on and he was heroic. Back now with our special coverage, Remembering Walter Cronkite. Leslie Moonbez is the president and CEO of CBS. And Morley Safer of 60 Minutes has been a CBS News correspondent since 1964. Morley, let me start with you. You've said that Walter was a wonderful person to have at the helm for correspondents out in the field. How did he support all those reporters covering the world when he was the anchor? Well, he, he was extremely supportive, as you say, and he was also a very tough editor. And I think the combination of that made you work even harder. You wanted to be not just right, you wanted to nail every story. But he also acted, how can I say this politely, as a kind of buffer, as a friend in court, a buffer between you and the brass, uh, less you're the brass. <laughs> You covered Vietnam with Walter, and he went to the front lines to talk with the troops on a number of occasions. Did he morally grapple with his decision to come out publicly against the war in 1968? I think he, he sweated that out for a long time. But ultimately, what he did, what he said, was really on so many Americans' minds at that point, and not just uh, voters, but elected officials and senior military people. Les, what do you think Walter Cronkite meant to the evolution of TV news and to the institution of CBS News in particular? I think um, anybody on the air today owes a deep debt of gratitude to him, what he stood for, how he handled the chair. Um, there was no secret that he was the most trusted man in America, and there was a reason for that. I think the legacy of CBS, it, it is so important because everybody remembers Walter Cronkite as being synonymous with the name CBS. He represented the best that we are as, as news reporters and the best that we are as a network. Les, in many ways, he was the antithesis of sort of the blow-dried anchor who makes his or her way through the ranks of local news. If a young Walter Cronkite walked into your office today, do you think you would hire him? I sure hope so. What stood out about him was his honesty, his integrity. He represented all of us, and I think that's what made him so trusted and so successful, and I would hope if a young Walter Cronkite walked, walked in the door, um, I would hire him. Les Moonves and Morley Safer. Thank you both so much. And coming up next, The Beatles, where it all began. And it's not where you may think. I never thought it could happen to me. Heart attack at 53. I had felt fine. But turns out my cholesterol and other risk factors increased my chance of a heart attack. I should have done something. Now I trust my heart to Lipitor. When diet and exercise are not enough, adding Lipitor may help. Unlike some other cholesterol-lowering medications, Lipitor is FDA-approved to reduce the risk of heart attack, stroke, and certain kinds of heart surgeries in patients with several common risk factors or heart disease. Lipitor has been extensively studied with over 16 years of research. Lipitor is not for everyone, including people with liver problems and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. You need simple blood tests to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor if you are taking other medications or if you have any muscle pain or weakness. This may be a sign of a rare but serious side effect. I was caught off guard, but maybe you could learn from my story. Have a heart-to-heart -heart with your doctor about your risk and about Lipitor. Discover a smoothie like no other. New Activia Smoothies. Creamy, delicious, and above all, it contains bifidus regularis and is clinically proven to help regulate your digestive system. New Activia Smoothies. Activia. I worried what would happen if I didn't start taking care of my heart, but I wasn't ready to give up taste. Sometimes sacrifice is the name of the game. Honey Nut Cheerio cereal tastes great and can help lower cholesterol. I guess I can do this. Be happy, be healthy.
Mmm, Bush's baked beans. Jay, it's Grandpa Bush. Let Duke sell Bush's secret family recipe. Nice try, dude. How'd you know it was me? Grandpa didn't have a tail. Oops. Enjoy Bush's baked beans made with our secret family recipe. Emmett, your gray facial hair has put you in a rocking chair. Your beard is weird. Just for men, Jill. Gets rid of gray in five easy minutes. His edge is back. He scores! Just for men. Keep your edge. Oh, my. Nice. Immune balance to strengthen the immune system. So the lady of the house will feel as good as I look. Now let's get to it. The complete balanced nutrition of Ensure now has immune balance, a unique blend of prebiotics and antioxidants to help strengthen your immune system. You better be brand. Mm -hmm. Ensure nutrition in charge. Now in rich dark chocolate. A broadcasting legend. An American icon, the biggest names in politics, news, and entertainment, remembering Walter Cronkite tomorrow. Former Beatle Paul McCartney took the stage last night at New York City Field, the new home of the Mets. That ballpark is the successor to Shea Stadium, where John, Paul, George, and Ringo performed in 1965, which ushered in the era of stadium concerts. Most be people think the Beatles made their American television debut on The Ed Sullivan Show in 1964, but Walter Cronkite, a real stickler for accuracy, always wanted people to know it actually happened on this broadcast in 1963. Beatlemania was well underway in the UK. We were offered a piece by a London bureau of uh, this phenomenon, so we put it on the air one night. That night was December 10th, 1963. Meanwhile, yeah, 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 the fan mail keeps rolling in and so does the money. They have sold two and a half million records. They lead the hit parade. What is occurred to you as to why you've succeeded? Uh, I don't know, really. You know, as you say, the haircuts. Despite the hysteria of their mostly female fans, it wasn't clear then just how long the Beatles' success would last. Do you have any fears that your public eventually will get tired of you and move on to a new favorite? Mm. Well, they probably will, but, you know... You ever think about it? Depends that? how long it takes for them to get tired. Ed Sullivan was watching that story, and right after the newscast, he called Walter Cronkite. We were good friends, and Ed said, Walter, Walter, tell me about those kids. Tell me about those kids. What kids, Ed? You know, those kids you just had on the air. The, 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 what do you call them, the Buggers or the Beatles or something? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles. That's... Close your eyes and I'll kiss you. That performance came two months after their debut on the CBS Evening News. We just hope we are going to have quite a run. And they did, with a little help from Walter Cronkite. If there's some credit in history for that, I want it. <laughs> and that is the CBS Evening News for tonight. There will be more about Walter Cronkite on a CBS News special tomorrow evening at 7, 6 central. I'm Katie Couric. Russ Mitchell will be here tomorrow. I'll see you back here on Monday. Good night. CBS News is very good news.